Welcome back and thanks for listening. This is the Fit Me Daily Podcast, hosted by me, Lauren Tober Reichert. Since opening up about my pituitary tumor diagnosis, I've had a few DMs about treatments and medication come through. So I know I've briefly talked about the medication I was prescribed earlier this year and that I still take today. Its generic name is Cabergoline and it's also known by its brand name Dostinex. I wanted to share more about my experiences on this specific medication and give you a few fast facts like what is it, some dosing information, common symptoms, my results, and what I can expect for the future. So let's get into it. So, what is cabergoline? Cabergoline is used to treat an array of medical problems that happen when too much of the hormone prolactin is produced. It's commonly used to treat pituitary tumors, fertility issues for both men and women, and certain types of menstrual disorders. Cabergoline works by stopping the brain from making and releasing the prolactin hormone from the pituitary gland. According to the American Cancer Society, dopamine agonists like cabergoline as well as bromocryptine normalize prolactin levels, and work so well to shrink prolactin-secreting microadenomas that surgery isn't needed. However, even if the tumor does not shrink while on these medications, both medications can typically keep prolactinomas from growing larger in size. Now let's talk dosing. Cabergoline is a medication that's taken orally. Dosing will vary from patient to patient, and at first, most of the common dosage is 0.25 milligrams, two times each week. That's exactly what my endocrinologist prescribed. The tablets can easily be split into two pieces and I take one full tablet each week. Because of the potential side effects, I took my endocrinologist recommendation of taking the medication right before bed. Speaking of side effects, it's not always easy for me to narrow down what is causing certain feelings or pain, like is this brain frog because of the medication or... Some of the common side effects of cabergoline are... Shortness of breath, chest pain, dry cough, lightheadedness, pain in your side or lower back, little or no urination, swelling in the ankles or feet, lack or loss of strength, nausea, constipation, headache, dizziness, drowsiness. When I first started taking cabergoline, I experienced the lightheadedness and the feeling like I was about to pass out. The morning after taking it, I do still feel a little foggy. Hello, brain fog. I always get crazy pain in my lower back, but I'm attributing that pain to adenomyosis, mostly. Hate to say it, but headaches and drowsiness are basically my normal. Side effects will range, and not everyone will experience what I feel, so don't let this sway you from potentially taking this medication. People who take cabergoline often say that their sex drive increases a lot. Increases in sex drive is listed on the side effects, and so is the urge to gamble, in addition to, quote, other intense urges. I've linked some of the other side effects that are not so common on the Fit Me Daily blog. Let's get into my results. After just a few months on the medication, I had a follow-up visit with my endocrinologist. We did blood work and my prolactin levels fell into the standard range at 9.3. The standard range ranges between 4.8 and 23.3. Most doctors or endocrinologists will want to see you again for blood work three months after you start taking the medication. My menstrual cycles also got more regular. Once my prolactin levels came back into a standard range, the spotting I was experiencing before taking cabergoline started to occur less frequently and basically stopped altogether. It's great knowing that my hormones aren't so out of whack anymore. So now what? Let's talk future. There are a few things that could factor into my continued use of cabergoline. First, if I were to get pregnant, my endocrinologist recommended to switch from cabergoline to bromocryptine, which is also used to treat high levels of prolactin. Next, there could be dosing adjustments. I'm still kind of unclear on how long I will be taking this medication overall. A number of sources, including the Mayo Clinic, where I am being treated, say that after six months inside of a normal prolactin level range, patients should discontinue use. I spoke with my endocrinologist briefly about this, and they basically told me that we'll see when we get there. 
Resources from the American Cancer Society say that if successful, meaning prolactin levels return to normal and the tumor shrinks or doesn't grow, medication may be continued for life. Regular MRIs to see if the tumor comes back are also recommended, and research out of the University of California says that lifelong treatment is required to control growth and prolactin secretion as well. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with my results so far, and I feel pretty confident about my health situation going forward. In the beginning, it did take a handful of endocrinologists to convince me to start taking cabergoline, but after I saw that my prolactin levels just kept rising after routine blood work, I knew that I needed to start some sort of medication or treatment plan. So I'm very glad that despite not wanting to take a medication, I decided to because my results have been very good so far. This is just a friendly reminder that I am not a doctor. If you have questions about the medications mentioned in this episode or any medications you are currently taking or about your health, please consult a medical professional. This podcast is available on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. Please remember to follow, rate and review, leave a comment, and share. The Fit Me Daily podcast is written, produced, and hosted by me, Lauren Toper Reichert in Phoenix, Arizona, and I will be back next week with another episode.